Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about jewelry and how I stack and layer it. How do you kind of create your wrist stack, your necklace stack. I'm going to walk you through kind of the tips and tricks, rules that I follow to make sure that everything looks very well placed but also a little bit messy and how do I not get all my pieces to tangle is something that I'm going to be talking about as well today. So if you're interested, then go ahead and keep on watching and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more and let's get into the video. So first I'm going to start off with necklaces. So I'm actually going to zoom you guys in just a little bit so that you could see my necklaces a little closer as we're talking about them. So you guys will notice that I have about four necklaces going on. Sometimes I do layer a fifth but you'll notice that they are all different lengths. So everything that I have on right here is Goriana minus this right here. Um, but Goriana did just come out with their own version of this necklace as well. So if I had known that, then I wouldn't have found this on some random seller website. So you guys will notice that I have four necklaces happening right here and they are all different lengths. So that's my tip number one when layering jewelry is to make sure that things are different lengths. Now it is kind of cool when you have something a little bit chunkier and a little bit daintier that might end up right at the same length. and lay on top of each other but it also looks really pretty when you can see all the necklaces kind of laying at their proper length nothing too obviously blocked out but something that kind of still flows but it's not like a crazy difference in length so if this one was like all the way down here it might not look as cute but these are all kind of within I want to say like within an inch of length of each other and most of these are adjustable so you can kind of have them sit and lay right where you want them to lay. So this choker right here is the kind of non-negotiable piece in my necklace stack just because even when you're wearing a high neck shirt you can still see this one necklace peeking through in the background so you can kind of always see that I'm wearing some sort of necklace so that's why I love this one a lot and I have it in silver as well. And then the next piece is this little dangly piece that has stars on it, also from Goriana. And I like this as a layering piece because not only is it a semi-choker, but it has a little bit of charm happening. So it adds a little bit of texture to the necklaces instead of everything just being a chain. So this has a little bit of something going on, but it's still very dainty and delicate. Then this herringbone necklace, I like it because it adds a little bit of statement without being too much because of the thickness of it and it's a different texture than the other necklaces so the difference in texture to these thinner more dainty chains is going to add a little bit more personality to your necklace stack which leads me then to this last one right here this is more of a paper clip chain necklace and it has a fun clasp that you can wear literally anywhere you can wear it to the side you can wear it right in the center you can wear it in the back and hide it but I just like how I have different textures, different chunkiness, and I have something a little bit more delicate and girly, then a little bit more bold and statement, and then a little bit edgier and fun. So it adds a few different styles within the same little stack. So you can dress it up or dress it down, you can make it edgy, you can make it girly, everything kind of works and flows with different styles of outfits. So I never take this stack off and it works with everything. Moving on to my bracelet stack. I follow similar guidelines and rules over here. So I have pieces that are a little bit more dainty and delicate, and I have pieces that are a little bit more chunky and fun. So the thing that I really like about my bracelet stack and my necklace stack is that I have two pieces that are the same as my necklace but in bracelet form. So this bracelet right here matches my necklace from Goriana because they're both, you know, from Goriana. They have similar pieces. And then this herringbone bracelet right here that I got from Etsy matches my herringbone necklace. So I have kind of matching pieces from neck to wrist. And then I love this little addition right here from this is from beads by tara and it has a little bit of bling to it because it has some cubic zirconia little diamantes in it in the stars and i like that it kind of ties the stars from my necklace to my wrist but adds a little bit of girliness with the diamonds then i have this thin cartier bracelet and a thick one right here and I have a repurposed Christian Dior little chunky um, 
what do we want to call this, like a nameplate kind of necklace, and it has a little hanging charm as well. I love finding these girls on Instagram that take old jewelry pieces or clothing items, and they take the charms and things off of these old pieces and make them newer, more modern pieces with, you know, the same original logo. So the actual bracelet is not original to Dior, but the CD that is here and here are both from a real authentic piece that they have repurposed. And then I have a fun edgy bangle right here from Monica Vinita that I think is fun and different because it has a flat top edge at the top and the rest is curved. And I have some silver and some gold in here as well, so I'm mixing metals on the wrist. And I think that having the different types of textures, having the girliness, having the edginess, having the mixing of metals really allows you to do whatever you want with your other accessories, with your handbag, with you know your clothing items, your jackets, maybe they have gold buttons, maybe, maybe they have silver buttons. You can kind of do whatever you want with your outfit accessories when you have mixed metals on your wrist or on your neck or somewhere else on you with your accessories. So that's why I've done this with my stack. And another thing that I do is I make sure to have different textures so that they don't get tangled within each other. And I do the same thing with my necklaces. As long as you have different textures of chain, they will not get tangled. The only time that they'll get tangled is if you have little hanging bits, if you have like bracelets that have hanging pieces. So for example, this necklace right here has a piece at the end that hangs out, okay? And this little hanging bit will sometimes get tangled in this little paper clip chain because the like foot of this necklace will kind of like get looped through the paper clips and it gets super annoying, but I used to have bracelets that had that same issue on my wrist and they would get tangled and looped into each other all the time so I ended up swapping those bracelets out because there's nothing more annoying than when all of your bracelets get chained together, tangled together. So I have opted for a, like slightly chunkier pieces and pieces that don't have excess hanging pieces to them. So that's what's happening on this wrist. And then right here we have a bead stack and some bangles. So I like the bangles because it adds some movement. Everything else is kind of stationary and sitting. This adds a little bit of, you know, something happening on my wrist, which I love. These bangles are actually from my grandmother and they're from India. So I have no idea where you can find um, gold bangles from here in the US like I really have no idea I would love to get more um, but then this bead stack right here was actually custom made per my requests from a friend of mine who just started making beads and her Instagram is posh but posh but I told her what size beads I wanted I wanted a little group of three that had nude beads with the gold and then I wanted one with smaller beads that was half silver half gold and then blah 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 so I created this stack myself with different sides beads, different patterns, gold and silver, and you know, like a nude bead. I added a lot of different textures, sizes, colors here, so that again, you have a little bit of mismatch, but also it's intentional. So everything kind of flows and makes sense. And when you're creating a bead stack, I know that it can be overwhelming. What sizes do I start with? Do I do this color, that color, four millimeter, three millimeter, whatever. My advice is to get one of each size to start with and then you can start building your stack from there. I personally like the four millimeter beads the best and then like the ones that have different sizes within the same bracelet and like some smaller ones in between. I feel like that's a good place to start. I do want to make this bigger as we go but these are not cheap because they're like gold filled or gold plated or something along those lines because the beads are expensive on their own so they do have to make the bracelets kind of more expensive um i don't know i for sure thought that these were like five ten dollars a piece but they're not they're like around thirty dollars so i'm building it slowly and then last but not least for earrings i don't really do anything too crazy i mostly just do studs and i have three mismatched studs on my ears the first two are from goriana and then this little starburst flower situation was a bat mitzvah gift. It came in a pair of two. I lost one, so now I just wear it as a stud in my second piercing. 
and I just do whatever with my earrings. Usually I'll wear a hoop, but with masks, it's really hard to take a mask on and off when you have hoop earrings. So I just have three mismatched studs, and I think that they're a lot of fun. I have a bee right here, a horseshoe right here, and then that little flower. So that is it for this video, how I layer and stack my jewelry, then my secret tip of adding different textures and sized necklace chains so that they don't get tangled. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot when you interact with my content. And then don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss a future video. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye.